Hey, I'm Keith Schroeder, and uh, we're at Nearstrand, Minnesota, about 40 miles south of Minneapolis. I don't know if I'd call myself first generation, but I started farming. My dad had quit farming uh, in the 60s, and then I started farming of my own out of high school. Just started with nothing and kept on working at it. I was in grade school, and all I could think about was running a tractor, or a planter, or a combine. So, family partnership operation. We've got myself and uh, three other sons that are farming. Well, most of the soil I farm in this area are what's called a lust soil. It's uh, wind-blown soil. It's pretty forgiving soil. If it's a little wet, we can get away with uh, working in it, uh, whereas some other land, uh, you know, doesn't give you those opportunities. Obviously, we start with uh, soil tests and, uh, you know, look at them. That's when I consult with Van. Uh, my agronomist. I'm Van Larson from Rochester, Minnesota, and I'm an independent crop consultant. I work in southeast Minnesota, and I get the opportunity to work with Keith on their farm, work with the corn and the soybeans, the fertility, along with uh, herbicides, uh, the variety selection on the soybeans, and hybrid selection on corn. What we've learned over the years is uh, we tend to plant more corn than soybeans, but we found uh, being able to do two years of corn and one year of soybeans uh, we're getting higher yields because we're breaking up the uh, chance for more disease uh, and things like that. So cor two thirds corn, one third soybeans has worked out really well for us. So the one thing with their crop rotation, it's normally a two years of corn, one year of beans, and we're using, turns out to be three different sulfur sources in the corn side. They're putting on some elemental sulfur, they're putting on ammonium sulfate in the spring, as well as on the corn planter, uh, they're putting on a blend of uh, liquid nitrogen as well as ATS, ammonium thiosulfate. So we're putting three sources on. With that system, these are medium textured silt loam soils, lust soils, two and a half to three and a half percent organic matter. So we're not sandy soils, so we're holding on to a pretty good reserve of soil sulfur, which can potentially decrease the response to some of the ammonium sulfate that we've been trying on the soybeans. We've always been using AMS sulfur uh, for years now on corn. Uh, so now we're just starting to dabble in this uh, project, doing it on the soybeans. And we had the opportunity to get involved with this soil uh, sulfur trial. So I was kind of all in just so we could learn some more, uh, you know, because uh, you got all these different conditions. Look, like last year we were getting plenty of rain, this year we were a little short. That's just one variable I can bring up where you need you know, four or five years for sure of uh, data uh, to work on it, to validate. Keith and the family have been growing non-GMO food grade soybeans for several years. You know, there's uh, added income opportunities to do the extra work, raising uh, what I call specialty grains. Keith was the one that really got me understanding that we got to do something above and beyond the average. We're finding, uh, especially it's environmental conditions will drive amino acid base. And thinking that some of the some of the amino acids are formed with sulfur. So obviously, if we could enhance some of those levels, uh, protein, amino acid balance, and things like that through the AMS, well, then that's a bonus. Well, this year we uh, we've got a, about a 215 acre field and we got four replications of sulfur that are probably about 10 acres a piece, but we've got them scattered over a pretty big chunk of ground. So the protocol for our uh, trial is to uh, put it on post-emerge at the R2 stage. We're surface applying it with an airflow, and so the, the, the material's laying on the dirt, and then you need rain to make it work. We put it on the day before we were supposed to get a really nice inch of rain, and of course that inch of rain never showed up. So uh, it took about a week, week and a half, and then we got about three quarters of an inch. What this sulfur is doing is really an add-on uh, to yield enhancement. The AMS seems to be the faster return item, so uh, we're kind of going uh, with that at this point. Right, because we may have a good environmental situation, adequate rainfall, sunlight, heat, and if we have a high yield potential for the crop, we don't want to have something that's easily managed to be a limiting factor and also reasonably cost as part of the whole inputs of growing a crop of soybeans. 
Last year we saw some yield increases and it worked. Those beans were just a little bit more robust. We found some yield advancements this year. We just got to see how the uh, how the business plan works out. Well, our beans so far have all been in the low low 60s, a little less than last year. We're real pleased with the amount of rain we got that we're getting yields that good. I was expecting uh, mid to upper 50s. I would say we'll have higher yields if we had more normal rain, but uh, with the relationship to the sulfur, uh, yeah, the more rain we get at the right time of the year is great. The industries, uh, farmers need to get their thought process uh, ready for the fact that there's going to be a lot more specialized needs. So uh, the quicker farmers in general can get used to that thought process, the better for them.